Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Overcast, the Chagas Sheep Podcast. Each episode, we bring you latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. We're joined in this episode by vet Tommy Heffernan to discuss joint tail infection in lambs. We discuss the bacteria that cause the condition and the potential sources, and Tommy describes the presentation of the condition, the routes of transfer and how that infection affects the joint. We discuss prevention, where Tommy highlights how doubling down on the basis of hygiene and colostrum management can have a big impact on reducing the risk of this condition. We move on to discuss treatment options, with Tommy offering his insights on effective treatment methods that he has seen benefits from. We finish up with Tommy Origin Farmers to revisit the basics and look at making the overall system easier to operate during lambing. We start off, however, with Tommy explaining a little bit more about the condition itself. I suppose looking at joint tail, joint tail is where we see an infection getting into a part of the body you don't want it in there, okay? So if we look at the surface of any of uh, any animal's joints, you've got this uh, bone covered in this nice cartilage surface. You've got this liquid, joint uh, liquid in there lubricating the joint. So joint tail is where we get an infection or inflammation there. Typically in lambs, we're, we're looking at infections. And what happens when you get infection in a sterile area like that is the infections will do damage. Um, we'll see swelling, but what we mostly see and we don't want to see is articular changes to the cartilage and bone. And unfortunately, when you open up these lambs after, um, you'll see all this bone is eroded and this spikes and damage and cartilage damage that's irreparable. Um, and uh, you can imagine the pain, and that's where we're, you know, in the severe cases, we're going to lose uh, lose these lambs. Um, so and I suppose the key thing is when infections get in, there's the speed and the damage they can do on articular surfaces. So when we look at joint tail, you know, the joint, uh, I mean, the obvious way would be a penetration wound, but everything we see in lambs in particular is probably bloodborne infections that their lambs are getting it, uh, you know, through some way in the blood getting into the joint. Essentially, it develops into a form of arthritis. And like, can that present in more than one joint, Tommy, or...? Uh, look, it can pick any joint, yeah, and you'll often see that if it's one, it can be two, and you you know you know from your own experience on farm, you'll see that it can be a knee, it could be you know it could be uh, look, it, it tends to pick the lower joints, but it can be in the back, it can be in the hips, but typically your knees and your lower joints will be, and your front your front legs will be affected, but it can get into any joint in theory, and some of these lambs you'll even see it in the back uh, and the neck as well, and these will be you know completely paralyzed some of these lambs, but um, typically lower would be the legs. I mean, given the fact that that's an infection, it's likely, and we see it on farms, it takes a couple of days to present. So when they actually have it, they've picked it up three, four or five days in advance, I assume. Yeah, so when you're seeing, you're seeing the end stage, particularly when you're seeing swelling. So like any bacteria, they go into the bloodstream, they're going to get to the area that they're, you know, they're going to get into the joint. Different bacteria will have different areas they like, but certain bacteria like Strep agalactia, we might pick, you know, that likes to seed out into joints and it'll start uh, building up colonies. The colonies start uh, developing into numbers and that gets quite rapid. And these bacteria are producing enzymes and stuff that damage uh, the local area. So when we're seeing that diffuse swelling and the, the, the leg is up in the air completely lame, yeah, you're looking at three or four days before, you know, that, that infection originally seeded in and it's typically in the first can be 48 hours to a week and we're, you know, we're often seeing a, a lot of a distance between five days and 21 days to be fair to say Kieran, wouldn't it it would and i suppose tommy the big problem with that is the lambs have to move away from the lamb and shed that lamb and pen where it's easy to get at and treat and now he's out in the field and picking up and anyone that's had it that tends to be the big issue yeah and again with like I suppose we want to prevent it always I mean that's been a lot of my focus but I suppose treatment is still we need still need to treat these lambs and the one thing I would always say about treatment in joint till is early and it's the same with everything unfortunately and um, the earlier you're getting in to kill those infections um, be it antibiotics and and medications to stop the articular changes like steroids or anti-inflammatories the better so when, like when it's going on for a couple of days which can happen you know these lambs can be you can miss them and um, the poor will have uh, poorer treatment success to be honest with you we might come back to that bit in a second but like you, you mentioned strep I take it that's the most common cause there are there others that can cause it as well yeah so there's lots so i i, I still think e coli are, are there there's, there's some staffs um people talk about erysipelas rusia patty it's one as a pathogen you can see in pigs a bit as well but i i have to say now uh, and it's been a while but i, I do get to talk to 
uh, pathologist in the lab and kind of an idea of what's happening. Any lambs that I would have opened up to swab joints to actually see, you know, we can do that. You know, we can do that and kind of figure out what's happening. It would have been strep agalactia. It seems to be the dominant pathogen in both Ireland and the UK now from talking to vets on both sides of the water um, that we're seeing when a joint ill. And it's unfortunately, it's a tricky little pathogen as well. It's not a straightforward one. Like, right, streptococcus, and it's fairly commonplace in the environment. So how did they go about picking it up? So, yeah, the, this is the challenge is that uh, Strep A. galactia, so there's lots of different, okay, it's a family of uh, species of bacteria, there's different ones then. Uh, Strep A. galactia can actually, when uh, you can have carrier yours, and I don't think, and maybe I, the last time I've read it hasn't been as, you know, where they actually carry it. So different bacteria can be carried, like salmonella can be in the gallbladder. But what happens, unfortunately, when their yours are carrying it, they can spread it uh, and it'd be totally healthy in vaginal discharges and can go in mis milk and colostrum. But obviously being in a vaginal discharge means that, you know, there's a high risk for that lamb picking it up. And um, there's a whole series of things that need to happen then around the bacteria being in the discharge to getting into the lamb. Um, and often they can go in through orally to the tonsils of the lamb and then actually overcoming the immune system and causing infection. So it's still back to like with all our diseases. Unfortunately, we still see a lot of our diseases the first 48 hours. You know, it's cold and colostrum are the big ones still. Um, so like even, okay, strep A. galactia can even cause problems when you do a good job of colostrum, but it's so important that we you know, still work on that dry, clean environment. Loads of good colostrum and having that your well-fed, particularly come up to lambing. I've done a lot of work with colostrum over the years and that close-up period to lambing and um, high quality energy and protein make a huge difference in the colostrum that you'll sample, if, if that makes sense. Like in the case, we might come to that as part of our treatment in a moment, like, but in the case where a lamb gets enough colostrum, in, there's still a good chance he can survive it. But that risk of exposure, so we've carry a yo there that can bring it in it's in the environment as well. Hygiene, Tommy, handling wet lamps and that roots of entry. You know, typically we think of the navel, the mouth, there are other entry points as well. Yeah, so if you look at the five key points for probably a lamb is the mouth, the ear, if you go near it, the navel, um, uh, the, any any sort of break in the skin or, you know, the tail or castrating lamb. So if you're using rings, you know. Um, so doing anything with a wet lamb where you're breaking the skin is a big risk, okay? Um, particularly where you're seeing issues with the actual pathogen and, the, you know, these flocks who are dealing with it. Um, you know, it might sound mad and a bit, bit of hard work, but we would have used, I would have used alcohol uh, washes for, for lamb rings uh, and even if tags were in use in some farms. Um, to be honest with you, because the risk of that, the infection that way. So wet lambs, doing anything with wet lambs, you know, sucking wet lambs, using your fingers in the mouth. And um, we strep, the particular strep bacteria seems to love hands. So, um, you know, nobody particularly loves wearing gloves. Lambing sometimes prefer to put their hand in and better feel. But wearing gloves is essential if we're looking at trying to reduce cross infection between carrier yos and other lambs uh, on our own hands, to be honest with you, Karen. Really, really important. Because it's not every yo is going to be carrying it. Um, I read a research a few years ago where they were looking at yos that were actually carrying it. You know, I think in a particular flock that was been looked at, it was been 5% of the yos actually had isolated it so you can see why you don't want to be just handling yours and going from yo to yo lamb to lamb because you could be spreading this particular strep no one you said it, it can survive on your hands i look it's good practice anyone anyway to wear gloves regardless if you have it or not when you're working in the lamb shed but like the navel i suppose tommy is another key route of entry and correct treatment and getting it dried up and disinfected in time as well it's, yeah, look, the navel is a good one. Again, I've done a lot of reading research over the navel. We were hyper excited about the navel 10 or 15, 20 years ago. And, and look, very much, it is very, very important. It's a tube. Remember, it's a tube. So if you think about the tube, it's the inside of the tube that the infection tracks up along. Um, and so when you're looking at the navel, it's really giving it a good dip or a good spray. Now, navel dipping can be hard practically on farm. We often talk dipping far suppress, uh, 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 far better than spraying, but spraying is probably more practical. And what I just say is a gloved hand, get your navel in and just literally soak the navel in a good um, either iodine alcohol based uh, navel wash or maybe a 0.5% chlorhexidine wash uh, and do that early. Um, but still, like one of the main things if you're seeing navel infections 
it's still colostrum, you know, it's still, still colostrum. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the navel is important. Remember to you getting in there early with a good, good disinfectant and having that as part of the routine is important. A lot of people actually, Kieran, would have been, and this is probably in the past now, would have used antibiotic sprays in the navel. Uh, you're far better off with a good disinfectant. No, I think it gets it dried up far quicker. So the, the your, your, your alcohol, anything with an alcohol base in it, um would i find tends to dry the navel a bit faster as well so um i've used various um concoctions over the years but you know your iodine alcohol base or sometimes chlorhexidine alcohol base works quite well to, to dry that navel quickly tommy in the case of an outbreak it can be a nightmare for any farmer in the middle of a lamb at time where he's already busy he's looking at lambs are suffering um in terms of treatment what options out there or what did they need to look at in terms of treatment yeah, so when we talk about treatment still, there's obviously, you know, we're always, and I'm uh, probably better than anyone for talking about reducing antibiotics all the time, but, you know, we, when we have an outbreak, we absolutely need to get in quickly uh, and treat and then think back about how we can prevent. And we'll always see it, like, you know, anyone landing in during a bad break in weather, it just seems to really put pressure on the system and you'll see more infections. So when you look at treatments, early, early treatments are really important. So, um, you know, uh, and we're talking about prescription medicines, uh, Kieran, so I'm very conscious of that. But, you know, uh, talking to their own vet, but I would have found uh, certainly with um, joint ill, um, an anti-inflammatory or more so steroids used early in conjunction with antibiotics was a very important part of that treatment. And I think that's well recognized in literature now that, you know, to stop the changes in the joint, um, dexamethasone is a steroid, which is a prescription drug, yeah, but it's available through your vet, is a very, very effective part of early treatments for joint ill. And then an antibiotic that's appropriate to the infection. Um, and I would have found over the years that, you know, um, some very straightforward penicillins would have worked very, very well for me. But again, that's a flock knowledge of the local vet and farmer relationship and what what drugs they would use no and look it's very important and anti-inflammatory or dexter i'm sure it's providing a bit of pain relief as well so yeah that's, that's, that's like the, that, you can imagine like you know anyone who's had has has articular injuries or, or from wear and tear will tell you the pain of it so acute uh, acute as you described it early on you know inflammatory arthritis is very very painful so but reversing that damage or stopping that dam, limiting that damage to the bone and eliminating the swelling and pain is, is as important as the antibiotic in the treatment. Tommy, look, we always, when we hit these cases, we deal with what's in front of us at the time, but we always talk about planning and prevention for next year. I suppose let's deal with the obvious ones, you know, the focus on good condition, good classroom, ensuring the feed quality is right. They're all kind of obvious ones we need to deal with as well as our own gloves and protection. What about dealing with them carrier use, Tommy? Is there possibly an advocate there for culling some of them, treat them differently? Is there anything we can actually do with them in the flock? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, it's something I actually haven't probably looked at. Um, you know, it, certainly if you could track, you know, if you're recording lambs and recording joint ill and looking at mothers and seeing if it's year to year. I mean, it's a it's a hard one because there's no easy test for it. You know, it's not it's not something you can go in and just test for. You're often going and looking at maybe lambs post mortem and and and, um, and then if you have twenty or thirty percent of the flock affected, you know, which ladies is it? I I think it's a hard one. It's something we need to maybe keep an eye on, on for the future. I certainly don't have the answer to that question today. Um, just one thing I would say, Kieran, that I've picked up and I, I've kind of been lucky. I, I work sort of across a load of species now uh, and kind of all back to the simple principles of really looking at reducing infection and improving immunity. And one of the areas I think that it could be an interesting one in flocks lambing indoors is water. Um, it's often overlooked. And, you know, we have a lot of the pathogens. I do a lot of water testing now. Um, and we see a lot of E. coli, I see a lot of streptococcal bacteria in water on farm. Um, and it's often to do with flow rate. And it's something that's often overlooked, I think, just to throw it out there to people, um, is something that I would keep, you know, I keep saying to people the you know, condition score and colostrum, that's a huge one. You know, occasionally maybe measuring colostrum as well to see where it's at. And there's a lot of gains to be made by feeding yours, close up yours, and looking at the forages that are going in. I think another huge one obviously is the environment you know fresh air being in there so we don't want cold lambs obviously but we don't want stuffy uh you know keeping that straw in there and unfortunately even with dry straw you'll see strep uh, a galactic but you'll certainly see more strep a galactic because it'll really peripherate where there's damp mild conditions so it's still about keeping the basics right if that makes sense 
No, I think you're 100% correct. And that hygiene in it, even in feed or drinkers, I think, Tommy, you're probably right. It's something that's often overlooked on farms. But it it just all ties in with when we see farms hitting that real pressure period where lambs are held back in bad weather, everything comes against them. And again, look at your lambing, immunity suppressed in the oats, immunity suppressed in lambs. These things will happen. Unfortunately, it's one of them ones to deal with. It is, yeah. And I suppose it's all about as well, if you're lambing indoors and you're doing it in a tight period of time, to make life as easy as possible for yourself. So having that source of hot water, having a disinfectant, even if it's just a Milton-based thing for all your equipment, um, you know, knowing where stuff is, having the bale of straw somewhere that's easy to pin up, you know, that, that everything is, if I'm a, if you were designing it, I'm beginning to, one thing I, I learned a long, long time ago is we're dealing with systems, you know, and there's a start, middle and an end, and we have to look at the flow of the system. And any way you can make life a little bit easier there, um, you know, be it the layout of where everything is, if it's your lambing toolbox, be it the gel, the gloves, um, the navel disinfectant, you have everything in the one box and it's nice and clean and tidy, all that sort of attention to detail, that's the stuff that pays off. It's not very exciting stuff. Um, lads would prefer if I was coming on to tell them that there's a new uh, injection there that's going to get rid of giant tail. There's not. It's still that attention to detail that delivers the results, um, Kieran. It's all the little things, it's always the basics. Tommy, that was great getting that update on it. It's a difficult condition to deal with. I think we have a bit clearer of a picture of how to go about now. Yeah, thanks, Kieran. Look, good luck to everyone lambing this season. It is one of the trickier diseases. I have to say, if you wanted to pick a tricky disease in sheep that I've come across over the last four or five years, is this strep A galactia. Um, it, is not, it is worth going more than you know, just focusing on what I can treat with. It is worth spending a bit of time investigating it and looking for, because look, where I've seen success with it, it's been a number of small changes made over time. Um, and that's what will deliver results. I think, in fairness, uh, we spoke briefly before we came on. I think there's a bit of research to be done on it, Kieran, would be fair to say as well, in the future to see, you know, what the next steps is. One of these emerging diseases, really. Definitely is, Tommy. Tommy, great having you on. Thanks very much. Take care. Thanks, Kieran. OK, we're going to have to leave the episode there at this point. I'd like to thank Tommy again for coming on once and explain the condition in a bit more detail. I think he's given us a lot better understanding of how giant tail occurs, how we can go about preventing it and some of the treatment options that should be considered if you have an outbreak of it. And again, as he highly had in, looking at that overall system and doubling down on the basics is always key during this lambing period. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates on the sheep programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chaga Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and listen in to any of our episodes.